Marzan, the founding pastor here at Crossroads Church. And I'm Deb Marzan, executive pastor of Crossroads Church. And I'm Dan Sauer, campus pastor at Invergrove Heights. Our mission statement is to reach out in love and acceptance so that all may become fully devoted followers of Jesus Christ. So if you're worshiping at the Lakeville campus, or at Invergrove Heights, may you find worship here today a blessing. How would you like to follow the message on your phone? On your version, simple steps. It's one, two, three. You can follow me to your version. Just follow the app, open it up, click more, go ahead and click on events. Type in Postbox Church, like you look in Google Get the weekly announcements and daily readings on new version. Many features for you to enjoy on new version. Good morning, He's an intimate God. He knows every hair on our head. He knows every emotion we have, good, bad, otherwise. He is intimately acquainted with us. And not only that, for born-again believers, he comes to live inside of us. So let us worship an intimate God today in Jesus Christ, not a faraway God. For he has come to be with us in us and everything that we do. So let us be encouraged. Um, a couple of announcements. We are starting family nights out on Wednesday nights, October 5th it will start, 6 p.m. here at this campus, and uh, that will include some food, so come, fellowship, prayer, and small group Bible study type exercises for varying ages, but come and join again, that's October 5th, starting every Wednesday night from there on. Also, a friendly reminder, first Saturday of the month is coming up, October 1st, grocery giveaway is upon us once again. And there are plenty of opportunities to serve. And I just want to make a personal petition to those who have maybe a gift of prayer, a gift of witnessing, winning souls. That is also needed in this ministry because we have a captive audience of 100 people sitting here waiting to get their groceries that we can visit with, talk with, pray with, all of those kinds of things. So please come also to, to serve. We need people to help unload the trucks and clean up. But that all starts at 8 a.m., we start unloading the truck, 11 to 12.30 is the food distribution, and then again, 12.30 to 2 is the cleanup. You can sign up online for all of those good things. Also, we have Project Cornerstone, which is coming to, a, this is the final week, to give flatware. Uh, what does that mean? That's bowls, plates, and silverware. This is a ministry that is helping people come out of shelters and get their own place. So imagine they really don't have much. So if we have some of those things that we can donate, that would be wonderful, preferably new. If it's used, make sure it's not garbage. <laughs> Bring nice stuff, and you can drop it off here at IGH or up at our Lakeville campus, and again, that goes through next Sunday, and then that will be the end of that ministry. Also, uh, sorry, not the end of that ministry, but the end of those donations. And then also, a friendly reminder, of we have been given an, a $25,000 grant, a matching grant, for our outreach ministries. What does that mean? That means as much as we will raise as a congregation between IGH and Lakeville, that individual will match up to 25. If we raise 12,000, they will match 12,000. If we raise the whole 12,000, they will give an additional, or 25,000, they will match that. So today, in your giving, if you want uh, some donations to go to that area, write outreach on the envelope, or in your online giving, uh, put outreach and the members. Let's be in an attitude of prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you are a living God. Let us praise your holy name today and understand that you are a living God who understands our every need, our every care, our every joy, our every worry. So we thank you. We give thanks this morning. 
Let us praise your name. Let us praise your holy name with thanksgiving this morning because you have done it all, Lord. So we thank you that you're in us and with us and through this, through us in everything that we do. We ask that you minister to us today as we minister to you, Lord. May your peace come. May your joy come to each one. And we just ask that you would reveal yourself as the wonderful, faithful, true God of all creation today. Amen. 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 Let's all stand as we go to participate, not just simply watch, but actually be part of the experience today, because worship is not a spectator sport. We are all in this heavenly choir giving God praise right now. Amen? Amen. Amen. You don't have to stand if that's not the, the condition of your heart. If you need to kneel, lie down, prostrate, and pour out your heart before God, whatever you got to do, just be sure that you are in an attitude of prayer and worship and that you are giving all to him right now. Amen. You hear me when I call. You are my morning song. Though darkness fills the night, it cannot hide the light. Whom shall I fear? You crush the enemy underneath my feet. You are my sword and shield. Though troubles linger still, whom shall I
in our life, we will know that you are looking out for us, you are really there with us, that's why we sing, that there's another in the fire, that's why we are grateful for the sacrifice that you gave us, of dying on the cross. when the heart is under fire Another way when the walls are closing in And as I look at the space between what remains in me and this mystery I know I will never be Joy to me. 
For the Lord in a prayer of confession. Lord, Father God, we come before you this morning knowing that you are a holy God. And we realize, Lord, as we look at ourselves, that as we examine our own hearts, that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have gone our own way, have insisted that we know better than you. And God, I just want to come before you, Lord, in a time of confession. Let's each of us take a minute for, of silent prayer to confess your sins before God. holy yet you are full of love that you are full of grace and you delight in forgiving the sins of your people as we come and confess them before you lord we pray that you would cleanse us now from all unrighteousness and fill us with the power of your holy spirit to live according to your word to live according to your plan empower us lord for we cannot do it on our own we just thank you for your abundant and amazing grace we ask that you would continue to fill us and speak to us open our hearts wide before you pour into us this morning in jesus name amen Yeah. 
For loving us so much that even though we rejected you, you still decided to die for us and make us your children and take away all of our sin and iniquity and all of our fear and give us purpose. Thank you, Lord. Amen. 
it's that time. All kids, let's go meet your teacher. It's time for kids on worship. And while the kids are gathering, it is time for us to greet and meet one another just for a minute. Once you get done, please return to your seats. Thank you. It's time to return to your seats and get prepared for the morning message. Thank you. We need to have a little longer time of, of fellowship in there maybe, huh? It's difficult to say hi to as many people and at least greet them within one minute, but we've done our best. Praise God. Everybody's smiling and joyful again. And uh, we're going to enter into some uh, prayer time, unified prayer time together. And Remember the promises of the Bible. Where two or three agree on earth, where two or three agree on anything on earth, it will be done by our Father in heaven. So let us remember, as children of God, those of us who are born-again believers, we're called children, and those part of those rights and privileges come prayer. We have a prayer hearing and a prayer answering God, so let this be our hearts turn toward prayer, turn toward Him, not just kind of an exercise of reading a thing. That's all I'm encouraging us in. So um, it should be up here for all of us. Okay, good. So I'll just start, and you guys join in. We'll all pray it together. All right, here we go. Heavenly Father, when I feel crushed by my own desires, lift my mind and help me to see the truth. When fear grips me tight and I feel I cannot move, free my heart and help me to take things one step at a time. When I can't express the turmoil inside, calm me with your quiet words of love. I choose to trust you each day, each hour, each moment of my life, I know deep down that I can cast these cares on you, that you have taken these anxious thoughts, and by dying on the cross, you have set me free. I choose to trust you each day, each hour, each moment of my life, I know deep down that I live in your grace, forgiven, restored by your sacrifice. You have set me free. Amen. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the freedom that you have given us. Freedom from condemnation, freedom from wrath, but also freedom in this life, Lord. We thank you for the new life in Christ today. We are in you, and you are in us, Lord. Thank you that you have heard our cries, you have heard our prayers, you know all of our emotions, and you are helping us through those. We thank you and we praise you today. Amen. Amen. Crossroads Church, it's a joy to be with you here this morning. I'm Dan Schauer. I'm the campus pastor here at Crossroads Church in Grove Heights. And so we live in a stressed out, anxious world, don't we? We really do. And 
what is the difference? The question people ask is, what's the, let's settle this right away. What is the difference between stress and anxiety? And the answer is, don't worry about it. <laughs> no, no, actually, I looked up a definition with the APA, the American uh, Psychological Association. It says, people under stress experience mental and physical symptoms such as irritability, anger, fatigue, muscle pain, di digestive troubles, and difficulty sleeping. Anxiety, on the other hand, is defined by persistent excessive worries that don't go away even in the absence of a stressor. So just to kind of clear it up, wondering what the difference, we're gonna be talking about both today, stress and anxiety, but they're not, they're not the same thing. So, according to the American Institute of Stress, there's some statistics for you. About 33% of people report feeling extreme stress. 77% of people experience stress that affects their physical health. So stress does have a physical um, impact on us. 73% of people have stress that impacts their mental health. And 48% of people have trouble sleeping because of stress. I'm sure many of us are like, yeah, I'm, I'm there too, right? Unfortunately, for about one half of Americans, levels of stress and anxiety are getting worse instead of better. Now the bad news is, stress and anxiety actually produce nothing good. Nothing good. I like the way um, the great um, uh, preacher Charles Spurgeon um, said it. He said, anxiety does not empty tomorrow of its sorrows, but only empties today of its strength. I like that quote. So anxiety does not empty tomorrow of its sorrows, but only empties today of its strength. So we're doing a sermon series called He Gets Us. Jesus was fully God, but he was also fully human. And Jesus was able to experience all the things that we go through. Jesus also experienced anxiety. And so we're looking at um, anxiety today is our point. And our cross point for today's message is Jesus gets us when we are anxious. So let's all say that together. Jesus gets us when we are anxious. So our scripture passage we're going to look at today is Luke chapter 22, verses 39 through 46. It says, Jesus went out as usual to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples followed him. On reaching the place, he said to them, pray that you will not fall into temptation. He withdrew about a stone's throw beyond them, knelt down, and prayed, Father, if you are willing, Take this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. An angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him. And being in anguish, he prayed more earnestly, and his sweat was like drops of blood falling to the ground. When he rose from prayer and went back to the disciples, he found them asleep, exhausted from sorrow. Why are you sleeping, he asked them. Get up and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. So a little context. Jesus had just finished his last, the Last Supper with his disciples. It was Thursday night, and they journeyed from Jerusalem, where they celebrate the Last Supper, um, to, to the Mount of Olives in the Garden of Gethsemane. And Jesus knew that that night he was going to be arrested, he would be um, taken and put on trial, he would be beaten, crucified, and would die. So he was anxious. Jesus was anxious. And so when we are anxious, Jesus gets us. He knows what it's like. So what we're going to look at today is four ways that we can respond when we are anxious. The first one is we can be in community. We can be in community. Look what it said in verse 39 of the text I just read. It says, Jesus went out as usual to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples followed him. So there's, you know, the whole group is going there. The, Jesus isn't alone. He's with his disciples. Jesus knew the importance of being with his closest friends in his most difficult and anxious time. 
that evening before his arrest and, and crucifixion. So he knew the importance of, of, his, of being with his friends. He knew the importance of community. Now, after Jesus rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, his disciples also prioritized community. They knew the importance of community. If you look at the book of Acts, which records the birth of the, of the, and growth of the early church, at the end of chapter 2, there's just many of you are familiar with this passage, but it's a beautiful picture of community in the early church. It says, every believer was fully devoted to following the teachings of the apostles. Their hearts were mutually linked to one another, sharing communion and coming together regularly for prayer. A deep sense of holy awe swept over everyone, and the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. All the believers were in fellowship as one body, and they shared with one another whatever they had. Out of their generosity, they even sold their assets to distribute the proceeds to those who were in need among them. Daily they met together in the temple courts and in one, in one another's homes to celebrate communion. They shared meals together with joyful hearts and, and tender humility. They were continually filled with praises to God, enjoying the favor of all the people. And the Lord kept adding to their number daily those who were coming to life. And they were all very, very stressed out. No, it's not there, is it? Right? So look at the, just let's look a little bit closer at the aspect of this community. So they were devoted to the apostles' teaching, you know, to the word of God. They were sharing communion and prayer together. Miracles were happening. People were praying for the sick, and they were being healed. There was the sharing of resources with those in need. Uh, they were meeting together frequently, and they shared meals together. They were filled with constant praises up to God. Now, a heart that's praising God can't be anxious. It just can't happen. So this kind of community, it just basically makes anxiety disappear. It's almost impossible to be anxious when you have community like that. And so that's what God wants to challenge us here at Crossroads Day, is that that kind of biblical community drives anxiety and stress out. Diedrich Bonhoeffer said, The church is not a religious community of worshipers of Christ, but it is Christ himself who has taken form among people. That's the church. That's why the church is called the body of Christ. It is Christ himself taking his form among the body of believers to go out and be Jesus to this world. And when you're on mission like that, when you're embodying Jesus, where does anxiety go? It leaves. Right. It's out. It's out of here, right, Janie? It's out of here. So when we are anxious, we should do the same as the early church. You know, be, we should be people who study God's word. And uh, just a little plug, Family Nights Out, like Jason announced, starts a week from this Wednesday. It's a chance for the whole family to come together. doesn't matter if you have a family or not. You can come as a single person. But come, and we're going to have adult Bible study. We're going to have um, Bible studies for the youth and then for the children. And we'll gather together at first and um, sing some songs and have a word of encouragement and devotion. It'll be a great time to study God's word and uh, be combating anxiety in our life. We can pray to God to do miracles, too. We should, when instead of being anxious and like, oh, my, what am I going to do? I can't believe this is happening. And I don't know how I'm going to come up with the money for this. And it, it, we, Pray to God. Pray to God to, to provide. And God does that. And share with those who are in need. Those of us who have um, plenty can share with those who don't, right? And then a lot of anxiety is caused by not having enough, right? I don't have enough money for my car payment, for my rent this month. And just that sharing of resources can help be a, um, cause anxiety and stress to leave. You know, and just coming to church every Sunday. Um, you know, the world gets you how m- uh, six days a week, right? You come for a little over an hour, hour and a half on Sundays, right? And, and that's the time we spend to God. We need to balance that out a little bit more, give God a l- more time than in, an hour a, a week because the world has us the rest of the time. And it's no wonder we're all stressed out, right? Because we listen to the voice of the world and the world's always telling us you need this and, and you, how can you do without that and 
how am I going to meet this need? And we just start, oh, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? So, and we can share meals together. Just as, a, what do we do each Sunday after church? What, Martha, what do we do after we go out to eat, right? Yeah, it's a chance to share. Um, what we call lunch bunch. And so we gather at a local restaurant, see Mar Mar Martha after church, and she will let us know where we're going. And so it's a chance to hang out, and maybe the Vikings game will be on the TV somewhere. But anyway, that's, that's probably not the best for fellowship. But, um, and also praising God. Don't complain. What do we do when we're stressed? We grumble and complain, right? I do. Oh, I can't believe this happened. What am I going to do? So-and-so didn't come through for me and, and all this stuff. And um, we start grumbling and complaining. Instead, praise God. Thank you, Lord, for all your blessings. Lord, thank you for what you're going to do to meet this need. And all of a sudden, you will notice that stress will lift. It will, like, it'll be, it'll be gone, right? So be in community when you're anxious. Number two, when we're anxious, pray to resist temptation. Pray to resist temptation. Uh, in verse 40 of our text, it says, On reaching the place, Jesus said to the disciples, Pray that you do, will not fall into temptation. So Jesus knew he was about to be arrested, right? And that he knew this was going to be a real tough time for the disciples. So Jesus had, Jesus had spent three and a half years with these 12 men, right? Training them, teaching them, showing them how to, how to minister. And so a time was, the time was about to come where Jesus was going to be arrested. What were these guys going to do? Were they going to stand by their rabbi, their teacher, or were they going to run, Right? So Jesus knew there was going to be a lot of it, fear and anxiety. And so we need to pray when we're facing anxiety, when we're facing stress. I like the story, I wanted to go back to the Old Testament, to a story about uh, um, the, from the book of Daniel. You know, it's a good name for a book, Daniel. And um, there's an example of a man, of, of Daniel praying to God to resist temptation. So it looked, it's in chapter 6, verses 6 through 10. It says, So the administrators and high officials went to the king and said, Long live King Darius. We are all in agreement. We administrators, high officials, high officers, advisors, and governors, that the king should make a law that will be strictly enforced. Give orders that for the next 30 days, any person who prays to anyone, divine or human, except to you, your majesty, will be thrown into the den of lions. And now, your majesty, issue and sign this law so that it cannot be changed, an official law of the Medes and the Persians that cannot be revoked. So King Darius signed the law. But when Daniel learned that the law had been signed, he went home and knelt down as usual in his upstairs room with its windows open toward Jerusalem. He uh, prayed three times a, d a day, just like he always had done, giving thanks to God. So did Daniel let the, this official decree that you could only pray to King Darius stop him from praying to God? No, no, he did not. And so he was able to continue to pray to God even in the face. The temptation would have been, oh, well, if I'm caught praying, I could be on lion food, right? Right? And so he, but he still prayed to God because his faith and was and trust was in God and he knew that God could deliver him even if um, he was caught. So when you and I are anxious, when we're experiencing our stress levels rising, it's prime time for the devil to try to tempt us. Now, Satan's not dumb. He's, he knows our weaknesses. He knows when we get our weak points, when we get stressed out. He knows when that, that this is a time. He goes, okay, this is a time where I'm going to zap Dan with this temptation, right? Or each one of us, right? He knows. So... When you're tempted to go, oftentimes he tempts us to go back to those sinful things that we relied on in the past for stress relief. I mean, it might be a bad habits, alcohol, drugs, sex, anything like that. That um, you know, persons, unhealthy relationships. We're tempted to go back to um, anything we relied on in the past, like basically idols that we put before God to help alleviate, get us through those stressful times. Satan knows. He comes and gets us right when we're stressed, right? Right when we're vulnerable. But instead of going to those things, God wants to challenge us today to pray. Instead, turn to God and pray. 
When you feel stress and that anxiety building, just when it starts even starting, go right to God. God, I'm feeling stressed, but I know you are the only source of relief from this. You are my God. You can handle any problem I'm facing. Um, ask Christians you know that are close to you. Call them up. Send them a text. Please pray for me. I'm, I'm going through a difficult time. And, you know, we can pray for each other. Um, and then, of course, at church, at Bible studies, wherever we're at, ask people for prayer. You know, I need prayer for this issue I'm going through. Those are things we can all do to resist temptation, to, to pray. So when, when those temptations come, when we're anxious, go to God in prayer. Third, when we're anxious, put God's will first. Put God's will first. In verse 42, Jesus said, Father, if you are willing, take this cup from me, yet not my will but yours be done. So Jesus was really anxious, right? Sweating, dro almost like drops of blood, right? And he did not want to go through with it. I mean, who would say, oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get crucified tomorrow. I wonder, I, I wonder what's on TV tonight. No, I mean, that's like incredibly stressful. And so he even asked God, God, is there a way I can get out of this? Is there another way we can do this forgiving humans their sins thing without me having to die? And, but he said to the Father, not my will, but yours be done. And so Jesus put the Father's will above his own. And Jesus calls each one of us to do the same. So he calls us to, to put him first instead of allowing stress to rise. And the reason, just if you really get into the psychology of worry and stress, we're really t telling God, God, you don't have this. You don't got me. You don't got me on this. You don't understand what, what it's like. And you can't deliver for me. So I'm going to worry about this, the outcome that is uncertain. Okay, this, might, this might turn out bad. So we're not trusting God with our future. And we're saying, God, you can't do it. And that's why we worry. So think about that next time you stress out. Say, I'm telling God that he does not, he's not enough. That he's not enough for me. And so, you know, think about that. I think that's, a, to me, that's a real eye-opener. Like, I don't want to tell God that he can't come through for me. So, anxiety and stress often arise also when God's trying to accomplish something important in our life. So, but we're not quite on board yet. So I can remember back when Marsha and I were... Um, preparing, contemplating, preparing to plant New Heights Church, which ended up merging, our church had merged with Crossroads um, a few years ago. And, but planting a church was scary. I mean, I was perfectly calm, but Mar no, <laughs> we both had anxiety. But Marsha being, is more, if you guys know Marsha, she's more of the practical person. I'm more of the vision, dream person. And I was like seeing God using us to plant this church. Marsha looked like, well, how are we going to pay our bills? How are we going to have food to eat? How are we going to pay our, our, you know, our mortgage? All this stuff. So she, which, which is, there's, these are good questions to ask. But, um, you know, God came through, and um, we put God's will first. God, you called us to do this. We're going to trust that you're going to provide. It wasn't easy. It wasn't easy. Uh, there were times where it was really stressful. But God came through. In Sunday school this morning, we talked, uh, we talked about the verse I'm going to read right now. It was in the passage, uh, Matthew 6, 33 is a real key verse to putting God first. It says, what you should want most is the ki God's kingdom and do it, doing what he wants you to do. Then he will give you all these other things as well. So what Jesus is saying here in six, Matthew 6, 33, put God first. Seek the kingdom of God above all else. And Jesus promises... If you do that, I will take care of all these little things that you're stressing about. It's a promise. Put me first, I'll take care of the rest. But that's not always easy, right? We, how many think that that's not always easy? It's not. It's not because we like to see things physically. So we would be, like if you're stressing about finances, God, I'll put you first if you show me the check that's going to show up in the mail from some anonymous person that's for all the money I need. Then I'll be, all, I'll be calm. The key is being calm before that check appears. That's what faith is. 
That's what faith is. Because you know your God, and you know God has got you. He will take care of your needs. That's what faith is. That's what putting God's first is. David Jeremiah, a pastor out in um, San Diego area, said, when I put God first, God takes care of me and energizes me to do what really needs to be done. So, important stuff. When we're stressed out, when we're not putting God first, we get distracted. We're not exactly thriving in the ministry of our gifts and talents that God's called us to do. We're worried about all these other things. So, if we put God first, God takes care of us, and he gives us the energy and strength to do what really needs to be done, and that's serve God in his kingdom. So put God first when we are anxious. And fourth, the last point, when we are anxious, call upon God for help. Call upon God for help. Verse 43 says in uh, Luke 22, an angel from heaven appeared to him and strengthened him. So in Jesus' moment of anxiety, in his moment of stress, God sent help from heaven in the form of an angel to minister to Jesus, to strengthen him. God didn't expect Jesus to handle this time, this most difficult time of his life alone. The angel came and strengthened him. And after this, after that moment the angel came, if you look at, if you read, when you read the Gospels, Jesus set out resolutely toward the cross. No question. He was resolutely focused. I'm going forward with this. I'm going to go. I'm going to die on the cross so that all of us can have eternity with him. We can, our sins can be forgiven, and the door of eternity will open up for all these millions of uh, followers of Jesus Christ. He set resolutely out because he had called upon God and he had um, for help, and God came and helped him. You and I can call upon God for help when we're anxious, too. We can call upon his help. One of my favorite passages in um, the Bible is uh, Philippians 4, in verses 4 through 18, 4 through 8. And just a little story about myself. I used to be, when I was younger, I used to be very anxious. I was quite an anxious person. And my uh, mentor, Andy, you guys might, some, some of you might remember me talking about Andy. He was my youth pastor in high school and discipled me and mentored me. It's the reason I'm in, I'm, I'm in ministry today. He had me, mem he knew I was an anxious l little teenager at the time, and um, he had me uh, memorize this, this, this passage here. And it's, it's done, every time I would get anxious for, you know, in those years, I would quote this verse to myself, and I would feel this peace come over me. And it, well, I'm already telling you what the passage says. So let's read it, verses 4 through 8. It says, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your ev gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. I see four keys to ang uh, reducing anxiety in that passage. Rejoicing. Rejoicing. Look on the bright side, basically, what to say. Rejoice in the Lord, always. So even when things aren't going well, say, Lord, I don't have enough money for this, the bills this month, but I rejoice that you can show me again how you provide. So just express joy, right? Um, prayer. Present your request to God. And so present, if we don't present our request to God in prayer, how can he hear our prayers to answer them, right? And then the peace. The peace of God, which is beyond our ability to understand. And I personally have experienced this hundreds and hundreds of times. The peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. And then meditate on godly things. I was reading, when you read that list about the things we're supposed to meditate on it, a lot of that stuff's not on social media. So, so um, you know, sometimes maybe we need to change what we're focusing on, Right? And so, what, you know, I think whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, pure, lovely, and admirable, excellent or praiseworthy, think about those things. 
And so you'll notice if you do these things, you will notice your anxiety just kind of exiting very quickly. So, and then going back to point one, God often sends us help by using each other, the body of Christ, to encourage each other. So that's another way God uses, God helps us by having each of us help each other. So call upon God when you're anxious. So let's review what we learned today. When we are anxious, we should be in community. An isolated person is not good for it when you're anxious. That's the worst place you can be is by yourself. Pray to resist temptation. Put God's will first and call upon God for help. So join me in prayer. Father God, thank you so much for being a God who has experienced uh, anxiety when your son Jesus experienced this anxiety, Lord. You get us, Lord Jesus. You get us when we're anxious. But Lord, you're not leaving us there. You want to help us. And you want us to be people who join together in community. We pray to um, resist temptation. We put you first in our life. And we call upon you for help. So Lord, I just ask for forgiveness for us for the times we've doubted you and we've let stress and anxiety run wild. Lord, forgive us. And from this day forward, Lord, let us be people who put our faith and trust in you, a God who can handle anything that comes our way. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for blessing us that way. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. So now I'll have the ushers, uh, Daryl and Dave, will be passing around the offering plate. And you can give online by going to crossroadschurch.org and clicking on the Give tab, or you can drop your offering in the plate. Remember to um, designate it for the outreach if you want to do that. And then um, those of you who would like prayer for anything, salvation, anxiety, stress, healing, please come forward, and uh, Janie and Joanne and myself will be up here to pray with you. Oh, one more thing, Jared. Um, just remember, while you're sitting there, if you don't come forward, remember to pray for um, Shane and um, Pat are both sick, uh, Angelica's sick, and pray for Greg and the UTech family as they mourn the loss of Molly. So. Try.
let's all stand for the closing blessing. And for our blessing today, we're going to sing the song, The Blessing. So let's all um, stand and sing the song with the worship team. Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you. Be gracious to you. Lord, turn his face toward you and give you peace. Lord, Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine. grace, all love, and all mercy be with you now, forever, and always as you go. Go in Jesus' name. Make God look good, and have a blessed week. Amen. 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 Amen.